Hi, this is Claire Pretzia, and welcome to another Hero Arts video. In this video, we are going to be making this Christmas card that has a very fun interactive element where when you press the forefront Christmas tree, the card will light up, at least the stardust. Um, it uses chibi tronic lights, and I go over in technical terms and in Claire version terms how to do this. All right, so to get this party started, we are going to take our star confetti die and we're going to make a background by creating a stencil. So I'm just, just taking some copy paper here. I like using copy paper because it's thin and it makes a better stencil. And we're going to prep our craft card stock with some anti-static powder. And then we're going to place our stencil on there. I added a little bit of adhesive in random spots, not anything permanent just to kind of keep that stencil in place while we smushed some verse mark all over it. And once we got our verse mark on there, we're going to cover it with some clear sparkle embossing powder because I'm obsessed with the sparkle embossing powder and I have to use it on pretty much every project. So now that we've got that on there and heat embossed, we are now going to make our trees. This stamp set, the Snowy Tree stamp set, it has three layers for the trees. It has an outline, a base layer, and a snow layer. I'm just using the base layer here and the snow layer here. I decided to opt out of the outlines because it wasn't necessary for this card. And I'm going to stamp my trees in three rather randomly selected <laughs> green shades. Um, they will be listed on the blog. I don't remember off the top of my head what they are. And uh, going to stamp those pretty quickly. I'm not worried about the coverage being super neat or anything because we're going to be adding our snowy layers to the tree. This is one of my favorite parts about the card is the snow. It's, I mean, it's not like super realistic looking. It's not like you touch it and it melts or anything, but it it's so cool. Um, it's much different than just using white embossing powder. White embossing powder is very glossy and flat and the puff white puff embossing powder that we use here for the snow actually has texture to it and it's not glossy so it's much more realistic looking. So I did that for all three of my trees and I actually have a blog post on how to get a more finished look and a more realistic look for the trees with a snow layer and I will link to that. But moving on, um, we're going to set the scene for these trees. So I'm just freehanding some hills for the trees. And I'm going to brush the top of those hills with some Versamark and then cover it with some more white embossing, white puff embossing powder. Because, you know, if the trees have uh, snow on them, then the ground's got to have snow on it too. So um, I'm going to just temporarily adhere those real quick together so I can trim off the sides because this card is going to have a lot of dimension. So I need to trim those sides off now before I add my layers and layers of foam tape. Once I have those trimmed, I'm going to go ahead and heat emboss a sentiment using some gold embossing powder right on top of that first hill there. Once we have that heat embossed ready to go, we are going to quickly die cut some stars using that same star confetti die to embellish our trees. So if you don't have gold glitter paper, which I used for this, it was just a little quicker for me, then you can make your own by covering a piece of cardstock with Versamark and then covering that with some gold embossing powder or gold sparkle embossing powder. I just used this sparkle cardstock because I had it. So I'm poking out those adorable tiny little stars and I'm going to adhere them on my trees. And I'm arranging everything, but I'm not adhering anything down for sure yet. I just want to know where I'm going to put my light. So that top star there, I'm going to mark that with a pencil because that's where I want my light to poke through. So first I'm going to poke that with a hole so then I can mark it on my card base where I'm going to build the whole interactive element of this card. All right, so. This is the scary part, the intimidating part. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I was excited to get this kit, but I was also intimidated because I am not good with technical terms and I don't like reading instructions. So what I did instead was I watched some videos and they're really good with all the technical terms. So I'm gonna try to stick with some technical terms here, but I'm also going to try to explain it the way I saw it. And maybe if you're not a technical person like me, that will help. So. We'll get the whole technicals, we'll get that out of the way right now. 
Um, so you're going to be building a circuit and to make this circuit you're going to have a positive side and a negative side um, and the battery has a positive and a negative side and the little LED lights that come with the kit they have a positive and a negative side and you're going to be building what I like to think of as a road but it's actually just a path you know just part of the circuit you're going to be making a connection so you're going to keep the negative side on one side of your card and the positive side on the other and make sure they don't cross and that's you're just kind of building a loop and that will make your circuit so <laughs> that's the technical version of this um, that was just hard for me to explain because I'm not a technical person so now we're going to do it the non-technical way um, so for me, I saw this as kind of building a map, and we're going to have a little house. So the house is the button, the battery for the card. So the button's where you're going to push, and the light's going to go off. And for this button, you have to build a little house, and I just took a strip of cardstock, I folded it in half over the battery, and basically cut it down to side size, and that made the house for my battery, which is going to be the button. And now I'm going to build my two roads to the house. There's going to be a back road to the back door of the house and a front road that will go to the front door of the house. Basically this whole front and back door is the side and negative, the positive and negative side of the um, technical terminology. So um, you see these little stickers. The pointy tip is the negative side and the flat bottom of the triangle that's the positive and with my pencil I quickly marked how close I need my roads to be you don't want your roads to intersect because um, technically that or in technical terms that's going to mess up your circuit so don't cross them and in Claire world um, <laughs> that means you don't want the roads crossing because you don't want you know cars crash crashing into each other or anything like that so don't let them cross um, the first road to the back door is very simple, just straight down. Oh, and real quick, I adhered the back door down to keep the house in place because the house can't be shifting around because houses, you know, they shouldn't shift around. Um, and now to go to the front door of the house, we are going to make a little road. It's a little more complicated. We have to make some turns. When we're making these turns, we want them to be as uh, clean as possible. So. You know, it's easy to drive on, but in technical terms, we want them to be clean so the circuit works well and um, the energy is able to, you know, flow correctly and doesn't get stuck anywhere. So, whenever I am making any of these turns, um, I'm just flipping the tape over on the side of itself. So, we're going to bring that uh, front road to the inside of the front door and that creates our two roads which you know in technical terms are the positive and negative side so to make sure that this works um, I'm actually going to mark it with my pencil just to make it a little bit easier um, to visualize I decided that the right side um, of my the right road was going to be my negative side and the left road was going to be my positive side if you wanted to, you could make your left side the negative side and, you know, vice versa, whatever. You just have to make sure that once you decide that, let's say, for me, if I decided that the right side is going to be the negative side, I have to keep my negative side of my light on the negative road and the negative side of the battery on the negative road. So I marked that with a pencil just to make it extra clear. And then I wanted to point out real quick that I did add a little bit of extra tape there near the battery just to make the connection a little bit stronger. Um, so if you're having any problems connecting, um, then it might be because your roads aren't uh, clear enough. So what I used was a bone folder to really press down those roads to get a good connection. Or you might need to press your little light down um, on the negative and the positive sides, you need to rub it down closer to that copper road that you built. Okay, so I hope um, that made sense uh, technical-wise and 
clear wise. Um, so now we there's still a little couple extra things we need to do to make sure that this works all right. Um, the light is only going to go on when the circuits connect and the circuits only connect when you're pushing the door the little flap down all the way. So um, we don't want to adhere that flap down because if we do then the light will always be on and it will run out. We only want the light to come on when you push it. So we have to keep the door open, but you have to be able to close the door. So to do that, I'm going to take that pretty little craft uh, front that we made and I'm gonna kind of chop it up a little bit, but it's okay, we'll cover it up with some hills. And I'm making an opening there for the door so that we'll actually be able to push on the door to close it and not just adhere it down and then it's stuck. So uh, we need to create a lot of dimension between the craft and the button just because the button is a certain thickness and if you don't have that dimension, if you just adhere it directly down, then uh, the space is going to be, it's just going to be funky. Um, so I'm adding a double layer of uh, foam adhesive around the card base and I also need to build a wall around my battery to make sure that it doesn't go shifting around because one your card will rattle and I know that because <laughs> I had a rattly card and also um, we want to make it tight because we don't want the battery to fall out and then when you you know the recipients pressing it nothing's happening because the buttons not even there anymore there's no battery so we got to keep that battery in place so I'm building a little wall around it when I'm building this wall with the foam adhesive, I'm actually not going to remove that top layer, um, the little removable seal, because I don't want to seal the door shut, but I will remove the um, little top, I don't even know what it's called right now, the top part of the foam adhesive um, to re reveal the stickiness so I can adhere that craft card base down. So I'm going to adhere my craft card base down and then you'll see we have that little opening for our door there now. Okay, so we are finally nearing the end here. Um, we're going to arrange our hills really quick in our trees and I'm going to adhere my trees down to that back hill and then I'm going to adhere my front hill directly on top of those trees and also adhere that uh, four front tree there. When I am adhering this entire uh, front layer with all the trees though, I'm going to adhere some, uh, I'm going to be adhering it using some foam adhesive and this is going to create that little pocket I guess so that you can close the door and so you can leave it open but when the recipient presses down it closes the door and that will create the uh, light. So you'll see I didn't put any foam adhesive right there at the top of the hill because um, if I put adhesive right there that would be shutting the door down, keeping it closed, the light would be on, again the battery would die, etc, etc. So we got to keep that little opening there. But uh, you can add adhesive around the side so we create that pocket so the door can stay open. So um, I found that the light was kind of bright so I wanted to diffuse that, so I just adhered a gem right on top of the light, and then I'm adhering my top star right directly on uh, top of that tree, and that pretty much will finish the card off. If you wanted your light to be brighter, then you don't need to diffuse it with any gems or paper. Um, you can just let it shine. But for me, I wanted a more subtle look, so. Believe it or not, that actually finishes up the card. <laughs> so um, I hope my going back and forth between the technical terms and then the weird Claire version of how to make this card with the whole um, Chibitronics, I hope it wasn't too confusing. Um, I hope it actually made things easier, if anything. But if not, if you have any questions, then please feel free to leave them on the blog or on the YouTube comment section. I will get back to you, do my darndest to explain anything. Um, and yeah, so the supplies will be listed on the Hero Arts blog. And thank you so much for watching and have a great day. God bless. Bye.